Hey everyone, welcome back. So the last couple of weeks we've been doing a lot of fiberglass work, sanding, filling, um, getting those fenders mounted. So they look really good. Um, I'm actually gonna make another playlist for the fiberglass work that I've been doing. So from time to time, I'll do kind of a whole bunch of videos that all have a similar theme. So this won't be for fiberglass. I've done some before for like the vinyl when I was doing a lot of the interior vinyl wrapping. So uh, look for those playlists. All right, so this week we're gonna go back to the car. We're gonna work on some of those isolation issues. So previously um, I had been working, trying to do some workarounds to get things better isolated. Lots of people said, well, shouldn't you just use these? And I was like, oh, great. So I got some uh, nylon spacers. I also bought some material that says it's uh, some electrically insulated material. So I'm gonna use that and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll start to looking at what we can do there. Also, hopefully, the inverter board has shipped back, so it's not here yet, but uh, hopefully it'll come here this week and we can test things out. So let's get to it. All right, so I've been doing a lot of the fiberglass work and uh, sanding and filling and stuff, so I forgot to uh, cover the car, so I've got some nice, like, calm tan lines. All right, so uh, last time we were working on this, I'd used some of this kind of rubber tubing to kind of insulate here and uh, kind of put the nut on, squeeze everything down. Um, that kind of worked, but uh, people said, hey, there's these things out there. They're called sleeve washers. So I got some of these. These are uh, electrical insulating sleeve washers. So I'm gonna put some on here. I also got some uh, material. It said it was, uh, I can't remember what the thickness was or even what the material was, but it was for also uh, electrical insulating material. So I'm gonna put some of that on top before I kind of bolt the uh, bracket on top. So this one, even though it was kind of all said and done and electrically insulated, I'll probably pop that one off and redo that one as well. Okay, we are gonna hold everything. Got the uh, controller back. So, so we're gonna go uh, see what we can do to see, kind of test things out. So, whew. Kind of nervous. Um, I gotta do a couple things before we can kind of hook it up and try it out, but uh, exciting. Okay, I thought I hit a snag. Um, in here, I'm supposed to have a 120 ohm resistor at the end of my CAN circuit and it's measuring like zero ohms, so something's not right. And I thought for sure I didn't have anything. I've got one resistor. It's 120 ohms. So I think this is a, it's a sign. It's a sign that everything's gonna work. So I'll go ahead and uh, take that plug apart, put this one in, put things back together, and that'll get a step closer. Okay, so I've been um, getting with the back back of the motor here, plugging in the high voltage cables, plugged in the the other cable, you know, CAN and all the con uh, communication cables, the encoder cable, 
all the way up here to the controller. So I think everything's good there. I've plugged in the high voltage as well. Um, for right now, I've just got pack one on, but I think, unless I'm, I always seem to forget something, but uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, connect my 12 volts and see if I can turn it on. Oh, it's, this makes me so nervous. So we'll go do that and, uh, oh man, fingers crossed. One thing I just remembered before um, I started is that um, I'm gonna take out my coolant pump relay. Um, Cause again, one of the very first things it does is kick on the coolant pump and I've got, uh, I've got open lines and other things. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that uh, relay out and then we'll get going. All right, I got it out. Um, this is usually one of those things that uh, I don't remember to do until after I make a big mess. So we'll see what other things I forgot. All right, uh, I'll take you closer. All right, so right here, it booted up, no boot cycle, um, and it's reading and communicating with the Tesla unit. So I think the next thing I'll do is I will um, put it in drive and kind of check to see if the motor is going, if the motor can spin. So here we go. Okay, so before I uh, try that, I just wanted to show we've got some uh, code, some air codes. So I think I'm gonna get those figured out before we uh, do anything else. So I don't know what all that means yet. I don't know, uh, anyway, it, it, no sparks. Um, it, it was seemingly talking to the uh, inverter, um, but it did, ha did have some air codes. So um, I'll just have to figure out um, what, what those mean if I, trying to think what that might mean but uh, they'll they'll clue me in on uh, what that is and uh, we'll see we'll see how bad it is or if it's just something simple okay I got some information on the controller on the fault codes we were seeing so it turns out that uh, the inverter board that I got I need to get that reflashed so uh, something I didn't know but uh, EV controls they said they'd go ahead and reflash that for me so uh, bless them they are a saint uh, for putting up with me so I will go ahead and uh, take that out, wrap it up, send it off. Um, it'll probably be another week or so just in transit. So um, we'll try and get all the other things sorted out in the meantime. All right, so uh, got the inverter board out again and uh, put it back on. So I'll pack that up, ship it. So in the meantime, we'll try and isolate some things.
All right, I've got this film on that's uh, an electrical insulator, and I also got the washers on, the sleeve washers, that are also insulated. So I've kind of tested everything here. This is great. Other side's great too. So that's a big thumbs up. You may have noticed we've got some blue lines here. So I've done some things out of order here in editing, but let me show you what that is. Okay, one of the other things I'll make mention, uh, these tubes, so I, I bought some tubing for coolant and I wasn't sure kind of how firm or soft I wanted it. So I got some of this, I think first, and it's just almost, it's like too soft that it kinks kind of easy if you bend it uh, too much. And so from there, I got some uh, more rigid stuff. And so again, that's this white stuff and it's like, so rigid that it's kind of hard to move and when you do move it then again it wants to kink so both of them have the kinking problem but i got this new tubing here and this is like awesome stuff so it's got like this braid in between so it's like really flexible um but it doesn't kink and so it's kind of just it's the goldilocks so again too firm over there was like too soft this stuff's great so i'll be replacing a lot of the uh tubing that I took off and kinked and stuff like that with this. Um, the other thing for me, I really, one of my requirements was I wanted it to be somewhat uh, translucent so I could see fluid moving. Um, I do have some of this in some places, but again, I just wanted to make sure I didn't have any like air locks or other things. I want to make sure that the fluid was moving. All right, I'm going to use this uh, new tubing and kind of replace some of these tubes that are kinked. Um, it's It'll be nice because I've, I've, it'll be nice before I kind of didn't know exactly where things are. I think I'm learning that it's best to kind of run your like electrical lines or plumbing lines or brake lines or whatever after all the things are in place. So now that I've got things kind of exactly, I know where they are, I can kind of cut the hoses or tubes exactly to the length and connect them. So I'm going to do some of that. Okay, the old tubing's out with kinks and stuff. New tubing's in. So basically, um, the cooling plates didn't move or change locations. All my T's and control valves, are, they're all still there. Um, it's really just these ones, again, when I'd wrap it around things and try and scoot things in and out, it'd kink. And you know, I'd straighten it and stuff. It'd still flow, but uh, it's kind of bugging me. So. This is gonna be, I think this is gonna work really well. I'm really liking it. It's nice and uh, very flexible yet very strong. Um, again, got both those cooling plates, got this top one here, and I still need to do, again, I took off the other battery tray, but that's the last thing I need to do. So I've got kind of a T here and one on the other side that they just need to loop together with the other cooling plates in the middle. So I'll wait until the motor is kind of fixed and we can put the battery tray back in to get kind of the exact dimensions we can cut and put that on but we got it all right so we were able to get everything kind of electrically isolated we got the controller back but we had to send the inverter board out so that'll probably take another week or so um, but also got all the cooling lines kind of fixed up nice so that's all the time we have for this week see you next week